Well, happening now, at last check, PNM says over 1,600 customers are still without power in Albuquerque, Valencia, and Sandoval counties, as well as in the East Mountains. That is down from 32,000 people. They say crews from Arizona, Texas, and other utilities are in New Mexico helping to restore the power right now, and more are expected to arrive today. Matt Morrow is in the Newsplex following the developments here. Matt, what uh, more can you tell us about the situation? Oh, one thing I definitely tell you is all those people cannot wait to get the power back on. They haven't had it since this storm as strong as a hurricane swamped the Duke City on Friday night. Streets flooded, trees down all across Albuquerque in the metro area after a storm with wicked winds and torrential rain ripped through town. Some of these winds hit at least 89 miles an hour as strong as a hurricane. Right after the storm, Sky News 13 got a bird's eye view of all the damage, flooding in homes, cars, and businesses. The storm struck downtown in the zoo especially hard, sending thousands of people who were there for a concert scrambling for cover. The zoo was closed on Saturday, but is now open again. And take a look at this. The isotopes had a very tough time battling the elements trying to get this gigantic tarp on the field, but... Mother Nature's fury proved much too strong. A few of the crew members got swept under the tarp. Thankfully, they're okay. And as if that wasn't enough, we got even more rain last night. Thankfully, without the damaging winds. This is near Coors and Islip on the west side. And as you can see, it wasn't just a sprinkle. The rain was pounding the pavement with cars making a splash. A PM says it hopes to have almost everyone with the power back up and running by tomorrow, and that crews are working all around the clock, including as we speak, to go ahead and make that happen. Absolutely crazy. It's been really wet the last few days. That's right. In fact, if you take the entire metro, everyone has at least averaged an inch and a half of rain for the month of July. And That's great news. so when you yeah, look at the numbers it. for the year, we have really made up uh, for some of that drought as far as the numbers go. We're at about three and a half inches so far for the year. We should be at about four and a half, so we're an inch below where we should be. Uh, that is certainly an improvement from uh, when we started. It's tough when you get all the rain at, at once, and of course that's why we had to deal with the flooding. And so as far as the drought goes, still a long way ahead of us to get out of that situation. We need more little bits at a time to kind of get us out of that. Today we'll see a few more storms around, but you can see flash flood watches are no longer in effect for the state. We'll have to watch for storms to pop up. If they do on the burn scars, that's where we'll have to watch for maybe some flash flooding uh, today. But overall, a downtick in storm. Southwest Colorado will be looking at most of the storm activity. And again, uh, we'll just be watching for a few late day storms later on this afternoon. Temperatures start to go up today. They're going to go up over the next few days. A downtick for a while, but but another uptick in storms later this week. The details coming up in just a minute. We will have continued coverage on this storm and all of monsoon season right here on KRQE News 13 as well as on KRQE.com. And take a look at this tour bus that was swept away by the raging floodwaters. This happened near Kingman, Arizona yesterday. The Las Vegas bound tour bus was carrying 33 people that was swept away. The bus was turned on its side during a second day of heavy rain in the state. Thankfully, no one was injured here, but the bus had been on a day trip to the Grand Canyon. And this morning, we now know more about a deadly Albuquerque police shooting from earlier this month. And the autopsy report has the family of Vincent Wood more upset now than ever. There's a man at the bus stop with two big old butcher knives. And he's blacked out of his mind. He already knows not to come on this property. He is, he is extremely dangerous. All right, that's 911 call from back on July 5th. It's from a security guard here near San Mateo and Montgomery saying Vincent Wood was threatening two teenagers and he had two knives. Well, less than five minutes later, an autopsy report shows police shot Wood nine times, including six times through his back. That night, police chief Ray Schultz there said that Wood lunged at an officer with those knives, and that's why he was shot. Now, Wood's brother says despite that, Wood did not have to die. I mean, they shot him six times in the back. I mean, you're not even supposed to shoot anybody in the back. The NAACP has tried to talk with the police chief and the interim police chief about this deadly shooting, saying it was unnecessary and inhumane. Well, police have still not arrested anyone in a deadly shooting in Farmington from this weekend. Police rushed out to Hoppy near Orchard about 8.30 Saturday night where they found three people shot. One of them, Christopher Valdez, 
was already dead. The other two were told should survive. Two other people showed up at the hospital later that night. They were also shot. Police are now trying to figure out how and if they were involved. Well, a man is out of jail this morning after sheriff's deputies say he was driving drunk with his 10 year old son in the pickup truck. Erickson Chavez is in court yesterday charged with child abuse. Vernon Leo County Sheriff's deputies say Chavez was tailgating another car Friday night near the Journal Pavilion. Deputies say Chavez was honking at the car and then slammed into the back of it. They say he had several open beers in the cab of his truck and he had slurred rambling speech along with bloodshot eyes. Erickson was charged with child abuse because his son was in the car. So police say. Poet parents, here is a warning for you. More and more kids are choking on food. The study is out from the Journal Pediatrics that shows an average of 34 kids go to the hospital every year because they're choking. This happens more often with younger kids, younger than the age of four. Now, kids are mostly choking on hard candy, hot dogs, nuts, and seeds. Well, babies aren't cheap. Tell me about it. One website <laughs> is now breaking it down to show you how specific they're talking. According to the babycenters.com website, your baby's first year for supplies, food, and diapers, get this, will cost you over 10 grand. They include things like a diaper budget of $72 per month, $59 for clothing per month, and just under $800 per month for daycare. They also estimate the total cost of having a child uh, up until the age of 18 is spending over $266,000. Wow, that includes $83,000 for savings for college. I hope you have a big savings account. Wow, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> All right, another new survey out shows four out of five Americans sadly struggle with unemployment, are near poverty, must rely on welfare for at least part of their lives. These struggles are increasingly crossing racial lines too. More than 76% of white adults say they've experienced economic insecurity by the time they have turned 60. And there is some good news this morning. Amazon is hiring if you are looking for a job. The online re retailer is adding about 7,000 jobs in about 13 states, the majority of them at its distribution centers. Now, to apply it, all you have to do is head on over to Amazon's website. Good luck. Wow, $266,000 for you by the time the kid turns 18. Oh, Not to mention the cost goodness. of college, which right now they say averages 83000 But in 18 years, that little girl is probably going to cost you more yeah. like 100 grand to send her to school. They got me on number one, the whole <laughs> diaper situation. That uh, is just such an yeah, expense. Yeah.